So what I'm kind of sensing by what some of the questions coming in that um, there's a kind of a, a little bit of anxiety or a hesitation to move forward with certain techniques, maybe, right? And so I'll give you an example of one of the questions that came in. So it's a question of rolling the feet rolling forward, right? And so what, what should you do? Should you just force the feet absolutely to the side and then keep going and, and allow for a little rolling if that's what happens? So here's the thing about these specific types of questions. It depends on your body. It depends on where we're starting from. So I really will need to see these things, see you in order to answer the question specifically. And again, this is going to be a feature of the Institute is where we, we trade videos, right? And as a community, we can kind of share these things. So, but I can answer it generally. So rolling is going to happen in the beginning, okay? But certainly you can minimize it by turning in your legs a little bit. You know, however, you don't want to train for a long period of time with your legs turned in and there's a way to sort of incrementally do that. And again, this is something that needs to be demonstrated and we're working on that. We will do that. But in the beginning, you understand if you just don't have the, it's really the butt strength, then there's going to be a little rolling and it, it's not a problem. But what you don't want to do is, 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 uh, put tension in your feet. That's, you definitely don't want to do that, okay? So, again, without seeing who, who, the person that asked this, without seeing you, I, I can't tell you for sure in your case what to do or not do, but in general, yeah, you turn in a little bit, especially in the beginning. You don't have to like force the feet. That doesn't do anything. I mean, you, your turnout needs to be honest in the sense that your knee is more or less facing the same position as your foot. But again, right in the beginning, things are going to be messy. And that's just what it is to start training the body correctly. It's a little bit messy. So, but what you don't want to do is try to force some kind of result that isn't, that your body's not ready for. Okay. So yeah, there's nothing wrong with a little bit turning in your legs. I mean, you, you just have to begin where you can honestly begin. And then you, st as you get a little more strength in, you, in your butt and legs and core and all that, it, you, your turnout will develop. That's what we're doing. That's what placement is, right? So yeah, you gotta be a little bit patient in the beginning and not force your body into positions that it's not ready for. And you know, again, it, it can get a bit monotonous. Like every day you're doing the same class, but it really isn't the same class because you start to get stronger and then you can start pushing yourself a little bit more. So on one hand, yeah, don't, you don't have to get too like keyed in on a little bit of foot rolling at the same time. Yeah. We don't want that to be a habit that you form. We also don't want you to fight it with your feet. The feet don't have a role in that at all. Okay. Now, another way to deal with that is you, you want to make your plies very, very shallow, very, very little plies. I mean like demi, demi, demi plie, especially if you're dealing with that. Okay, so the deeper the plie goes, the more the feet are going to want to roll, right? Because there's it, the deeper the plie, the more strength you have to have in your rear and your turnout to maintain that turnout, that, that position where you've got the, the heel, the knee, all in the same line. So just make, I mean, you can even do a plie that's almost just a kind of a softening of the knees, although that's not what plie is. It's, it's, it's something that you create from your hips, but you don't have to do a, any particular depth of plie. You go as deep as you can without rolling terribly. You know what I mean? So this is sort of the mentality that, that I'm trying to share with you is that you don't need to think about any particular outcome. You have to think about, you have to stay in the moment and push your body to the extent that you can within the rules of placement, or I would say the constraints of placement. So you, you really need to focus on these pretty straightforward rules, right? And work within them and, and not really worry too much about the outcome right away because the outcome will happen as a result of you focusing on 
the rules, right? But of course you need, I know, you need help and guidance for some of that. So that's what I would say. If you're, if you're having issues with rolling, shorten up your plie as much as you need. I mean, you can just, bear, like, I don't know what you can see here, but just nothing. I mean, what will look like nothing, but will be tremendous work for you. And it gives you, you time to develop your, your rear, you see what I mean? So the deeper you go, the more work is required, the more strength is required to hold yourself together. So when you're starting out or you're not too far along, you just don't have the strength, so don't go that low. It's just like with Tondu, you know, don't push so hard into the floor if you can't control your hips yet. Just step at a time. And of course, when I can start seeing your progress, then I can tell you exactly what's going on. Now, the interesting thing about that is you're all going to have a very similar experience. That's the thing about placement is it, it's, it's a very consistent set of uh, results that occur, right? It's, it's not like even with different body types and all that, it's still basically you're all going to have a very similar experience that you can then, of course, share. And then so, in other words, I can answer some questions once and it's, it's applicable for everyone or answer it from a few different angles. And it's so I don't need to answer the same question a thousand times. I can answer it maybe in a few different ways that will apply to everybody. And so that's one of the, the cool things about placement method is that it's there aren't that many variations in it. It doesn't really even matter what kind of body type or size or whatever. It's just these principles apply everywhere pretty much equally. It's just a question of a few specific things, a few att attributes that you'll have or different from other people and we'll just have to adjust it a little bit, but the concept is the same all across the board. That's what makes, that's why we can actually achieve as a community of people in ballet a uniformity of a, a pedagogical method that is universally applicable everywhere. It doesn't matter what country or what style or any of that stuff. Fundamentally, it's universally applicable. So that's the good news. So I hope I answered that question. Is there anything else? No. Okay. Uh, Oh yeah, another part of that is, um, so, uh, okay, so here's what I would say. The, the question is about, you know, you want to, st you're studying on your own, at home, good, fine. But you want to take some classes sometimes, and I would say, well, go take the, go take the class sometimes. There's no reason to just sort of lock yourself in, into the, you know, placement and not go take class every so often. Or, you know, once a week, twice a week, I mean, it's, it's up to you what you want to do. You just have to understand that depending on the class, if you can find a class that's, you know, like an adult class that you can kind of do your own thing a little bit or adjust some things and the teacher doesn't care that much, or a nice, slow, methodical class where you can use your placement as best you can, you know, by all means, go take class if you want to take class, you know. You just have to choose the right class and the right teacher who's willing to be kind of be flexible with you a little bit, right? And, you know, not a lot of, you know, and you might just do the bar of the class. You might do the bar, a little bit of center, but, you know, no reason to go jumping around. You know, and again, it depends on where you're at physically, your age, a, a few variables to consider. And I think you know what those are. So, you know, just be, be reasonable about what you do and, you know, try things out. Take, you know, one class a week and think, is that, is that enough for you? Maybe you want to take two classes a week. Try it. Maybe do three, maybe a little too much. It also depends on how well you're able to maintain your body. You see what I'm saying? So there's just a few levers that you can, you know, pull and so forth to make sure that you're getting what you want and what you need. And, you know, to f find that, that balance between, you know, doing placement facing the bar and dancing a little bit, right? And of course, if you tell me your circumstances or, you, you know, you said the more specific information I have, the more I can answer your question. Okay, and hopefully, like well, I think I mentioned in another podcast, we'll get a Q&A going somehow, like a live Q&A, and I'll be able to answer questions quickly that way. Okay, so I think that's it for now. The cat has been very useful. Hey, you passed out. You gonna wake up? Hey. No. No. Cat being doing what cats do best. <laughs>